to see you there. Thanks for dropping in to Science Time with Jody. I'm Jody. This is the show where we bring your out of this world questions down to earth. This show is in a partnership with Moorhead State University Star Theater, where I work as a planetarium operator and with the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky, where I am an alumni of many of their STEAM programs. I'll leave links to all of these in the comment section below so you can check out all the cool things they have going on. Oh, what's that? Oh, what song was I playing? Oh, this? This is an old Appalachian tune named, called Cripple Creek. I love the sound the music, I love the sound that music makes. I also love the pitter-patter sound of my dog Abby's paws as she walks across the floor. And one of my favorite sounds, that's gonna be weird, is when my video game says game over. Now, I know it's weird, but I don't, and I don't like the message it gives me, but I love the sound it makes. You know, what are your, what are some of your favorite sounds? Let me know in the comment section below. You know, all of this talk about sound has got me thinking about today's space question. Can sound be heard in space? Do you think you could hear my banjo in space? Come on, let's go to space and find out. Could you hear me? Did I sound okay? What's that? You couldn't hear me? Well, that actually makes a lot of sense because you can't actually hear sound in space. You heard me right. Sound cannot be heard in space. Why? Let's investigate. So before we can answer the question, why can't we hear sound in space? We first have to understand what sound is exactly. Sound is created whenever matter vibrates, causing a disruption in the air particles or other matter around it. Get it? That was easy, right? No? You're confused? No problem, let me bring this down to earth for you. Let's start by talking about matter. Matter is anything that takes up space. Uh, here are some examples. We have my clothes, they take up a lot of space. We have instruments, we have a rain stick, and me, I'm matter, and the most important one, you matter, and you are matter too. Um, what are some examples you can see where you are? What about your clothes? Do they take up space? I know they take up a lot of space in my closet. Then they're matter. How about your computer? It takes up space on a desk. Then it's matter. How about your home or your pet? I know they take up a lot of space. Then they're matter. Matter is found in all shapes and sizes, as you can see. Is there, you may be wondering, is there matter in space? And there is. What are some examples of matter in space that we can see from Earth? What's that? The sun, the moon, and the stars? Oh, oh, oh those are really good ones. What about... Oh, that's right, the planets and comets and the ISS are as well. You're brilliant. So, you might be wondering, what does matter have to do with sound? Well, to understand that, you need to understand vibration. Vibration is when an object moves back and forth rapidly or quickly. Can you think of some examples of things that vibrate? Here are some of mine. Whenever you, whenever you pluck a string on an instrument, it vibrates. Whenever you talk, you can put your hand up to the base of your neck and you can feel the vibration. Um, do you happen to like video games by any chance? Well, if you do, then you might have a controller that vibrates. It usually would happen whenever something big is happening in the game, or your character might be taking damage. Could be something else. And some, ooh, here's a really good example. Sometimes, my washing machine gets out of balance, and it shakes so hard it vibrates the house. Matter does something really neat when it vibrates. It makes sound. Do you like that sound? I sure do. Now, now you might be asking, Jody, how am I able to hear the vibrations of matter? I'm glad you asked. When matter vibrates, that back and forth movement disrupts the air particles around it. This disrupted air moves in waves. Think about what happens when you toss a rock into water. It creates waves. Sound travels through the air just like the rock causes waves in the water. Now you might have noticed that the waves in the water don't continue forever. They eventually run out of energy. Sound waves work the exact same way. Eventually they will run out of energy. 
That's why, when a sound is created, it doesn't last for a long time. It's also why you can't hear a quiet sound if you're far away. Now, to understand that sound is created when matter vibrates, causing a disruption in the air particles or other matter around it, I have a question for you. Why can sound not be heard in space? To answer a question you don't know, it's usually a really good idea to start with what you do know. We know that matter has to vibrate to create sound. So I have another question for you. Is there matter in space? Sure there is. Remember when we listed some examples, like the sun, the moon, the comets, the ISS? They're all matter, and that matter vibrates. And since it vibrates, it, creates, it should create sound, right? Actually, it does. In fact, if we could hear the sun with its constant explosions, it would be so loud that we couldn't hear anything else. Oh, hold up now, don't get too upset. I know what you're thinking. How can the sun be deafeningly loud if you can't hear it in space? Well, you have to remember that sound needs matter to move through, like air for instance. In space, there is matter, and it vibrates, which creates sound, but there isn't enough matter for the sound waves to move through. You may have heard that there is no air in space. Well, you heard right. So, my down-to-earth explanation is, even though there is vibrating matter in space, which creates sound, since there is no air in space to transfer the sound waves, Sound cannot be heard in space. Now that you understand sound, let me share with you some ways you can explore sound at home. For this first way to explore science at home activity, we are going to be using something called a Spectrum Analyzer app. This is an app you can download from the App Store or the Play Store, and just be sure to get your parents' permission before downloading anything from the internet. For this, ex for this experiment, this app allows us to see sound waves. As if you can remember sound waves from earlier, they're waves just like, an, just like throwing a rock into a puddle of water. They go outwards and that's how sound moves through the air. This app lets us see them. For the first experiment, I'm going to be talking in a normal voice, a high voice, and a deep voice. I'm going to say the same thing for each one. Hello for normal. Hello for deep. Hello for high. You can see the difference it made in the sound waves. The second experience I'm going to do is talking versus singing. I'm going to be doing the same thing, but I'm going to be talking in one of them and singing in the other. Hello, how are you? Was singing. Hello, how are you? Is talking. For the second Explore at Home activity, this, will allow, this activity will allow you to see sound waves at home, again. I call this the Sugar Dance Party. For this experiment, you will need a Bluetooth speaker, a piece of paper, and a little bit of salt or sugar. Your first step is to find a song that you like. Once you've done that, you then need to take your Bluetooth speaker and turn it on. Bluetooth mode. Then you just have to let... Bluetooth is connected. Then you have to let it connect just like it did. See? This is our song. So, you will then set it down face up. After you do that, you put the piece of paper on top. And then you just sprinkle a little bit of sugar or salt on top. And then you turn up... You turn up the volume and have a great time! What's that? You don't have a Bluetooth speaker? No worries, you can still make your sugar dance with this next activity. All you need is a large container, a large enough piece of plastic wrap to cover said container, a couple rubber bands, some sugar, and your voice. The first step is to take your container and set it down. Next, you'll want to take the piece of plastic and cover the top. You want to stretch it on the sides to where it's nice and smooth. For this next step, you might need a parent's help, or maybe a sibling if, you're, if they're nice enough to you. You need to take the rubber bands and put them over the side to, make, to keep it this way. 
Then you put your sugar on top. And now here comes the fun step. You lean down to the side and you talk to the side of the can. You can change you can talk normally or you can change your pitch or lower it. You can even try singing. Uh, and if you just so happen to have both, if you just so happen to also have a Bluetooth speaker, you can set the other one here and have a sugar dance off. Try adjusting the volume and see what happens. Or how about you try a different different songs? Do your sugar crystals have moves? Tell me in the comment section below. So for our next Explore Sound at Home activity, we're going to be making a water xylophone. For this activity, you'll need water, a couple plastic or wooden spoons, and some drinking glasses or glass jars. Always make sure you ask a parent's permission before you use any of their glass of their glasses or glass jars. For our first step, you need to set out your glasses. Next, you need to fill the glasses with varying amounts of water. If you're wondering why we do this, we actually do this because, as I mentioned earlier, everything that takes up space is matter, and water takes up space, so it's matter. We also mentioned how sound travels through matter, especially like air, but it can also travel through other matter like water. In this case, the reason why we use different amounts of water is it actually changes the pitch. When you have a lower amount, it gets a higher pitch. Or maybe you want to be on the dangerous side and add a lot of water. It changes the pitch. For, your, for the next step, you want to take your two plastic spoons or wooden spoons and tap, not hit, the side of the glasses. Next, see what songs you can play. Now that we have a water xylophone, what other instruments do you think you can create to explore sound? Well, you might not even have to make any instruments. If you were to have real instruments like a violin or fiddle or maybe even something like my banjo I had earlier in the show, you can explore sound that way. But if you don't happen to have any, that's no problem at all. There are plenty of, there are plenty of online tutorials you can look up on how to make them. You can make a rain stick. Isn't that a pretty sound? It sounds like something you'd sleep to. Or you can even take our sugar dance party can that we had earlier put its lid on it if it has one. If not, you can just hit the plastic. And once we do that, you can take your spoons from the water xylophone and hit it to make a sound. You might even try turning it upside down to get a different sound, or even hitting the sides. And there are even, and there's so many more online you can do, such as tambourines or maracas, or maybe even a guitar if you're lucky. So, now that we know that sound cannot be heard in space, but there are lots of wonderful sounds here on Earth that we, can, that we can enjoy. As a matter of fact, I'd like to hear your thoughts on an age-old question. If a tree were to fall on a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, now that you're a sound expert, use what you've learned to answer the question and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I had a lot of fun learning about sound with you today. If you had fun, then give this video a big thumbs up so I know to make more videos like this. You're also going to want to click that subscribe button and hit that bell to be so you're notified when I make another video. Speaking of future videos, if you have a great question about space you would like me to answer, just put it in the comment section below. Who knows? In an upcoming episode, it might even be your out of this world question I bring down to earth. And as you leave, I'd like to share with you another one of my favorite instrument sounds, the fiddle. I'm going to I would like to do this by playing a, by playing another old Appalachian tune that I love. This is called Bile Them Cabbage Down. <laughs> Science Time with Jody.